Hello. This is Jared from Commit Quality, and in today's video, we're going to go over emulation with Playwright. Emulation is really important and something you should be doing within your test packs because it's going to speed up your testing while being consistent, ensuring quality across your web app. So I'm actually on the Playwright emulation documentation page right now, and it states right here, with Playwright, you can test your app on any browser as well as emulate a real device, such as a mobile phone or tablet. And all we really need to do is configure some settings and we're good to go. Most of the time, it's all gonna be out of the box for us as well. The reason I'm showing you this page is because it's really rich. So I would say, if you do have any questions, drop a comment below, definitely. But also go to the documentation, have a little look as well. Um, I'll provide a link to this in the description. But let's jump right into the test pack then. So all I've done is I've got a basic test created here where I've got a page.pause we go into commit.quality and another page.pause just to make it look just to make seeing the changes we make a lot easier the bulk of the work you're going to want to do is inside your playwright config so inside your playwright config if you go to the projects you'll see I only have chromium set up at the moment and all this does is it goes to a desktop prom so if I actually say um, mpx playwright test and we'll say in headed mode so we can see what's happening. All that's gonna happen is desktop Chrome is going to load. Uh, I'll click continue over, it takes us to commit to quality, and then it's all done. Now, what if I said, okay, I know multiple users use different devices. So I need to make sure that the tests I'm writing work on desktop and on devices such as tablets and phones. Well, this is quite easy to do. If I was to copy this project and I'll rename it to, let's just say iPhone, let's pretend we want to emulate the iPhone. In the devices section here, I'm just going to delete all this. I'm going to add the square brackets again and add quotations. And what you'll see is a list of all the devices we can use. So if I actually type in iPhone, you'll see we've got a bunch of these different iPhones. So I'm going to say iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, if I save this and I run my command, but instead of just saying headed now, I'm gonna say project equals iPhone because that's what I just named the project. What we're gonna see now is the browser opened is WebKit because that's what Apple are gonna be using with us. And if I continue over it, you're gonna see from the viewport already, it's emulating the viewport of an iPhone 13 Pro Max. And the difference we can see with this one is with desktop Chrome, the nav bar was spanned across, whereas on mobile devices, we have it at this burger dropdown. So straight away, with, the, with that one little change, that copy and paste and change in the device type, we've just got our test running against an emulated version of an iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now it is worth noting as well, if for whatever reason you wanted to change some details, so let's say for whatever reason I wanted to change the viewport, maybe Playwright didn't have the viewport correct for the device type. I can do that, I can do it directly in here. I can see viewport and just to show the difference, let's say the width will be 800 and we'll do a height of 800, which basically means a square box. And I know my website should show the desktop version with this viewport. So save that and rerun my test with project iPhone. And what you'll notice now is when this loads, the device will still be, the browser will still be WebKit because it's taken from the device, but anything else we add into here can overwrite whatever we have in the device settings. So let me drag this across. We can see that it's still WebKit. And as I continue over it now, you can see it's gone to the web page. It's in the viewport of 800 by 800. And we can definitely see that because the nav bar has now changed back to what we see as part of our desktop view. Awesome. So that's just a really quick walkthrough of how we can change to different devices, how we can overwrite the value set inside devices. So if I actually go to definition on this, you've got a list of everything and you can hover over and you can see the device description that takes in the viewport, the user agent. So when we say use an iPhone, it's actually setting the user agent to what we want. And you've got a bunch of these different ones as well for device scale factor is mobile has touch. And of course, default browser type as well. So we could say want to emulate an iPhone, at the moment it sets it to WebKit, but we could say overwrite it and I want to emulate an iPhone using Chromium. Nice and easy on that one. But it is worth noting, we're not just limited to what device properties had in there. 
So let's get rid of viewport a moment and tell you what, let's say, let's change our locale to um, Spain. So I think that's ES, ES like this. And uh, we'll even change the time zone as well. So let's say time zone ID is set to Europe slash Madrid, because obviously we're in Spain. Now then, uh, I'm actually going to go to google.com on this one, because I believe in Google, you change your time zone locale and it'll pop up and it should show us Google in the Spanish language. So let's run this project again. Of course, it's emulating there. I'm just going to continue over because I'm debugging. And what you're seeing here now is it's simulated that we're in Spain and it's give us the terms and conditions acceptance or the cookie acceptance in Spanish. If you know Spanish, this will make a lot more sense to you than it does to me. So let's just close that down and clear this. So we're looking good. So we've kind of gone through the basics of how we can simulate devices and change some values. But what if I want to emulate something completely on its own? Well, it'll be very similar to this. So let's just copy this again. And of course, we need to change the project name. And I'm going to say own emulation. Once again, you can name this to whatever you want. And now then, instead of actually specifying device, um, tell what, we'll get rid of base URL. Well, we'll get rid of all of it for now. Instead of specifying device, I'm going to add my own information. So I'm going to say viewport width, and let's just go 800 by 800 again. So say height of 800. Uh, let's say set our user agent. And we'll say our user agent can be subscribed because I'm not setting anything as well. The default is going to be Chromium as well. So it's going to run Chrome for us. So I am going to actually put anything in there unless I really want to, but I won't. I'll leave it blank for now. Um, I do want to show you geolocation, how you can, um, how Playwright can emulate the location app. But let's just leave it at this for a minute so we can show user agent. I rerun this, but make sure you change the project name now to own emulation and hit enter can see that Chrome has loaded for us. I'm actually going to inspect and open the network tab as well, because this is where we're going to want to view uh, our user agent. I'm going to hit continue over these. Now, if I go to Google and I scroll down in the headers, you can see now user agent has changed to what I've put as subscribed. Perfect. Now, there is a website as well which I believe is GPS coordinates. I do have it saved somewhere, so give me a second. So I've got this website here, which is GPS coordinates, which asks for permission to view your location, and then it'll define where your location is. And I wanna use this website to show you how we can emulate this, how we can approve um, permissions to allow location, and also how then we can get this to be displayed. So. Instead of google.com, let's change that to gpscoordinates.net. And in my Playwright config, now, I'll keep the user agent, doesn't really matter. But what I want to say here is permissions, first of all, because it needs to grant permissions. And in here, we're going to say geolocation to say you have access to this. And let's change my location. Let's say geolocation, and we're going to say longitude, uh, I don't know. 12, 07, and we'll say latitude, 88993. I'm just making this up as I'm going along with it. So let's hit save on this, and let's rerun our test, and let's see what happens. Okay, so that's loaded. I'm going to click run. GPS coordinations, and here we are. It's got my locations are here of my latitude, and here's my longitude, where is my location, and it's in Rome. Now then, what happens if we close this down and we don't allow permissions? Let's save that and rerun the test again. Let's continue over, and what you can see here now is you've got this pop-up for permissions to allow this website to know our location. So it's really valuable to know that you have to set that permissions property, otherwise you're going to be blocked and it's not going to take the geolocation and print out what you want it to. Awesome, so let's clear that. So we've shown